Hey everybody, this is Rhett. Welcome to Statistics. In this video, we'll look at the relationship between margin of error and confidence level. To illustrate the relationship, let's consider a guessing game. In the first version, it cost $5 to play the game. You guess the number of jelly beans in the jar. If you guess the exact number of jelly beans, you win $20. Otherwise, you lose. Would you be willing to play this game? Consider a second version. It still cost $5 to play the game. You guess the number of jelly beans in the jar. If you guess within five of the actual number of jelly beans, you win $20. Now would you play the game? How about a third version? It still cost $5 to play. You guess the number of jelly beans in the jar. This time, if you guess within 25 of the actual number of jelly beans, you win $20. How about now? Are you willing to play? Consider version 4. It's still $5 to play. You guess the number of jelly beans in the jar. If you guess within 50 of the actual number of jelly beans, you win 20 bucks. So what about now? In version 5, it still costs $5 to play. You guess the number of jelly beans. But this time, if you guess within 100 of the actual number of jelly beans, you win $20. Now would you play? Let's say your guess is 300 jelly beans. In version 1, to win, there must be exactly 300 jelly beans in the jar. There is no room for error. Not many people will play. Confidence is low. In the third version, to win, there could be between 275 and 325 jelly beans in the jar. The acceptable error is plus or minus 25. More people will play. Confidence is moderate. In the fifth version, to win, there could be between 200 and 400 jelly beans in the jar. The acceptable error is plus or minus 100. Many people will play. Confidence is high. Notice that the confidence grows as the room for error grows. And so is the relationship between error and confidence in confidence intervals. There is a trade-off between acceptable error, or required precision, and confidence. When you are required to be precise, you are less confident. When greater error is allowed, you can be more confident. This is a fundamental concept of confidence intervals. In confidence intervals, E is the symbol that we use for margin of error. C is the symbol that we use for confidence level. As E increases, C increases. In other words, as the margin of error goes up, so does the confidence level. When the margin of error decreases, confidence decreases. How does the confidence level affect the margin of error in confidence intervals? Recall that the margin of error is the product of standard error and a multiple of the standard error determined by the confidence level. For example, to estimate mu, we may use x bar plus or minus e, where e is the product of a critical value and the standard error. Consider a statistic that follows a normal distribution. A wider interval captures more of the data. The values plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 1 are critical values, or z-scores, from the standard normal distribution. Larger critical values correspond to wider intervals of the distribution. A critical value of plus or minus 1 corresponds to 68% confidence. A critical value of plus or minus 2 corresponds to 95% confidence, and a critical value of plus or minus 3 
corresponds to a confidence level of 99.7%. This concept applies regardless of the distribution of the critical value. So remember, an increase in confidence level results in an increase in the margin of error. So you have to choose between precision and confidence. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Until next time, stay real and be rational.